Hi, and welcome to ELEC Week 37, Part 1 of 3. Today we are going to look at operational amplifiers, also called OPAMP. They are high-performance differential amplifiers. And today we are going to look at first the simple, then the basic operation, and then we're going to look at the ideal op-amp uh, for analyzers purposes and together with the real op-amp also for analyzers purposes. Yeah, let's look at the simple. The simple we draw here just as a triangle. It has uh, two important input pins. It's the non-inverting input and the inverting input pin. So the pins here. And then it has the output pin, V out also called it. Then the op amp of course also need power. And we have here the positive supply pin, normally symbolized with a small plus sign and VCC. Then we have the negative supply pin called VEE and that's normally used for dual supplies. Um, then some up amps also have adjustment pins and they are normally drawn out here below on, or on top where we can add some features so that the output will change. But for now we can also see plus sign that's the non-inverting input and then the inverting input and V out. Let's go to the basic operation. The basic operation is when the non-inverting input voltage here is higher than the inverting input pin's voltage, then the output will saturate to the positive supply. But if the non-inverting pin's voltage is less than the inverting supply, sorry, the inverting pins voltage, then the output will saturate to the negative supply. So in basic we can write if the non-inverting pin voltage is higher than the inverting pin voltage, then V out will go to VCC. And if the non inverting pin voltage is less than the inverting pin's voltage, then V out will go to the negative supply. The output V out can also be written as a raw gain of the op amp, since it's a differential amplifier, it has a raw gain, also called the open loop. Voltage gain. So V out is the differential between these two pins. So it's V plus minus V minus. So meaning the voltage on the non-inverting input minus the voltage on the inverting input times the raw gain of the op-amp 
that's equal V out. The raw, up, uh, the raw gain of the op amp is very high, um, over 100,000. So that's why it's saturated. It only needs a tiny amount of difference that this will saturate to one of the supply pins. So if we imagine that we put here a small power supply on and we just ground this one and we say we have one millivolt and we assume that the raw gain just for now is 100,000 then we will have V out equals 100,000 one millivolt minus zero well then we will have hundred thousand millivolt and that's clearly saturated to the positive pin if we have the opposite case where the non-inverting pin is zero and this has one millivolt we can see that this sign here will give a negative sign on V out. So it will saturate to the negative supply. Yeah. That was the basic operation. Let's go and look at the ideal of it. The ideal op amp can be modeled with a small dependent voltage source and the dependent voltage source output is the raw gain and the non-inverting voltage minus the voltage on the inverting input. And the input here, if there is running a current, this will be zero because in the ideal case there will not run any current in. And it also is the same for the inverting input, that the current will be zero ampere in both cases. That means if there's not running any current in, the resistance here inside, R in, must be infinite since there's not running any current. On the output we can see there's just a wire. That means that air out must be zero ohm. So for the ideal op amp, this will not run any current in to the op amp on any pin, neither the non-inverting input pin or the inverting input pin. So R in is infinite ohm. And the small dependent voltage source that's dependent on the difference between the non-inverting input and the inverting input and the open loop voltage gain and the open loop voltage gain in the ideal case is infinite. Yeah, that's the ideal of them characteristics. Um, the raw gain or the open loop voltage gain is at times, so this is not voltage or current, because the input voltage and the output voltage is both voltages and voltage or voltage will simply be at times. 
Then we look at the real op amp. Here the, there will run a tiny input current and it's in the range of nanoampere to picoampere on the very good op amps. Both ranges. Meaning that we will have some kind of finite input resistance. So R in is not infinite anymore. It will have the range of about mega ohm to giga ohm. And air out will not be zero anymore, but be in the range of 10 ohm to about 1000 ohm. The small dependent voltage source will still give an output here at this point as the non-inverting input voltage minus the inverting input voltage still but now this one it has a real value and typical values are in the range of 10 to 4 to 10 to 6 for typical op amps um, yeah that was the real op amp. Um, so we can expect a small current to flow in and we will see that something connected to the input pin will experience that there will be running some current and we can model that with an input resistor. Yeah. The next thing we will look at is a small overview of the whole topic we have been through here in part one. And we looked first at the symbol for the operational amplifiers. And very simple drawing of a triangle with input pins, the non-inverting input and the inverting input pin and V output, the output pin and supply pin for the positive here and the supply for the negative. There was also sm some small adjustment pin on some of apps. So they can be drawn here or on top. That is uh, different. Then we have the basic operation. If the non-inverting input pin voltage is higher than the inverting pin voltage, then we out will saturate to the positive supply. And I mean saturate is not necessarily giving the voltage from the supply pin out, but it gets close. And the same if the inverting pin voltage is actually higher than the non-inverting pin voltage, it will saturate to the negative supply. So if we will easily remember, you can say if the non-inverting input positive is higher than the inverting, well, then this one dominates, we will also get a positive output. And the same here, if the inverting uh, voltage is higher, uh, the, sorry, the voltage on the input pin is higher 
then the voltage on the non-inverting input then it will saturate to the negative sign so the negative supply so we can see here this sign if this dominates we will go for the negative supply and the output voltage is an um, equation of the open loop gain it's also called the raw gain of the op amp and the difference between the non-inverting input voltage and the inverting input voltage. That's the basic operation. Then we have the ideal op amp. The features from here you can say there's not running any current into the input pin. So we will have an infinite input resistance and the small dependent voltage source output is given by the raw gain and the difference between the voltage on the non-inverting input and the inverting input and the raw gain is in this case infinite so if you time something with infinite you will really depending on the sign of this one will go to the either the positive supply or the negative supply then there is no output resistance on an ideal op amp for the real op amp there is another case air out have a very realistic value of 10 to 1 kilo ohm the raw gain of the op amp is now in the range of 10 to 4 and 10 to 6 times depending on how expensive op amp you buy you get some with very good gain and some with um, better gains then here we have now on the input pin a small current running though it's in the nano ampere to the pico ampere meaning that we will have a finite resistance input resistance of about mega ohm to giga ohm or even higher um, yeah. so that's the very basic on the op amp so thank you for listening to part 1 of ELEC week 37